Welcome to another episode of Be A Better Game Dev. Today we are going to be talking about delay nodes. We will go through what they are, how they work, why they are bad, why they are terrible, and also why they are not good. Nah, just kidding. There are some cases where delay nodes make sense, but they are very rare. So delay nodes can cause a lot of problems. So what we will be doing is we will be looking at some bad use cases, some solutions to better approach these use cases, and also in the end mention some reasonable situations where the low nodes, the, the delay nodes can be useful. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's talk about the delay node. What is the delay node? Well, the delay node is a node that you can call that has an input of an amount of seconds that you want the delay to happen. After the delay has finished, it will continue to execute whatever code it has to the right of it. So this is something that stalls your code and refuses to execute anything else until the delay has passed. You can either do it in this way where you uh, assign an amount of seconds or you can call on it with the duration of zero seconds, which will uh, be interpreted in the engine as it will wait one frame, uh, it's one tick generally, um, before it does the execution. And there are some, some cases where, where this is useful. Now, I, I want to point out um, Delay nodes exist in almost all programming languages in some form where you just wait a period of time. And my personal opinion is that you should almost never use them. Preferably you should never use them, but there are some circumstances where they might be useful. Now I'm not saying that it's stupid of Unreal uh, Epic to have these nodes like delay and tick and such in, in the engine. All of these nodes make sense and they have a purpose for existing. So it's not like it's bad of them to have these in. The point I'm trying to make and to get across here is that if you use these tools wrongly, it will have dire consequences. So you need to be aware of how to use them and what it entails so that you can make use of them better and preferably as little as possible, right? Anyway, the delay node, in my opinion, is what I call a short-term solution that gives long-term problems. because. It's very common that uh, users don't know what they're doing and they're like, ah, oh, something's going wrong here, let's put a delay node here and maybe that'll fix it and it fixes it, but they don't know why. And then later down the road, they will have problems and they don't know why those problems are occurring. It's gonna be difficult to troubleshoot and such. So that is why it is, in my opinion, good to have as few or none of the delay nodes as possible. But now that we have talked about what basically is the delay node, let's look at some use cases of what you should not do and what you can do as an alternative and such things. So in the case here, I have a bit of code. I have a character in this world where I can left click to uh, play some animations. Now this code is not important that it's, this happens to be about animations, but it could be basically anything. The, the same logic applies here, which is that you have some code running or you want to have some code running, then you have a delay node that is stalling the code before you do some other piece of code. In this specific example, I have on my left mouse button that I disable the player's movement, then I play an anima animation because I don't want the character to move while it's doing its animation, let's say. Then I have a delay that is going to be at the duration of this animation before it allows to continue, and after that it has happened, it enables the movement for the player again. Now this all makes sense, right? It seems sensible of an approach. So uh, to display what this looks like, if I have my character here, I run, I attack, it stops, and then when it's done with the animation, it continues running. That all makes sense, right? The problem with this is that, and delays like this, is that it creates an unresponsiveness. Um, in this specific inst instance where we have animations, we might want to have it being cancelled for some reason. Maybe our character gets damaged and that should interrupt the animation. Maybe some other cause could cause the animation to stop, right? And to simulate this, I'll put a, a right click here that will allow us to interrupt the animation. And that's the only thing that it will do. So uh, also you can see that I have some text here that's essentially giving us some feedback about what is happening. So now I click the animation interruption button <clears throat> and then it runs that code. So if I run my character now and I press my attack, you can see it disables the player and then enables the player. But what happens if I start attacking and then interrupt it immediately? Well, you can see the animation stops, but the character is still disabled. 
this creates a very unresponsive feel for the character, right? Because it will never give me back my control of my movement until the delay has finished. So, what is a better approach to using delays in these kind of circumstances? Well, if we take this left mouse button event and move it over here, we have something very similar over here. Over here, we're disabling the movement again. We're playing an animation just like before, but instead of using a delay, this is my preferred use for delays in every case, essentially. Always use timers instead of delays because I feel delays have almost no uh, existence where it's actually useful, except for a few, which we'll talk about a little bit in the end. But essentially it's running a timer here by an event uh, for the same duration, meaning that at the point where the, the time has passed here, this event will call and we can say, okay, give back our movement to our character. To be able to say that this event should stop prematurely, we also need to have a uh, reference to the timer itself so we can cancel it once this event has been running and in our interruption over here when we click on right mouse button instead of just stopping the animation we also want to say we want to call on our event over here so that this event can be called before the full duration of the time has passed so let's take a look at what this looks like so if we go in here i right click and then i run i left click for attack and then interrupt and immediately you see that we stop the animation and we also get the ability back to move. Now this creates a much more responsive feel for the character and is in my opinion a much be better alternative for this specific case. I hope that all of that made sense. Let's move on to another example. So another example I see sometimes is you have code like on tick and then you have something like a sequence, and then you have some code here. In this case, we're running some trace walls, and then we have a delay, and then after that, we run a roof trace, and after that, we calculate some movement blends and stuff like that. So this, in my opinion, is a bad approach because you have a tick, which is supposed to happen, in most cases, on every frame that's being rendered in the game. This is completely opposite to how a delay node works because a delay node is something that's set for a fixed time and then runs some code while event tick can be variable depending on how your computer is performing currently and whatever it's doing so this can go up and down a little bit so having a delay node in tick is a really bad idea so when it comes to for solution I say just write code that doesn't use the delay node at all when it comes to tick, if you are in the need of using tick for something like this. So the code here itself isn't really relevant and, and not really important. It's just that you, you should probably never have a delay node inside of a tick event. Okay, moving on. My next example here is of something that happens usually uh, when you have initializations working, but it can be something that uh, is happening for other reasons as well. But that is essentially it's in this case, we have a begin play for a character where we set up some uh, things. In this case, it's not really important. It's setting up the HUD so I can show the messages for you on screen and such things. And after that, we might want to run some code. So in this case, we have a blueprint component an actor component here that's uh, over here simulate grid it's supposed to simulate running some kind of initializations when it's created the component itself and then we want to somehow interact with whatever data or or things that the component has available to it in this case the run main functionality is this event uh, or function that uh, simulates this so if we were to uh, run this code in the the game we can see component not ready run failed so a very natural way to approach this would be like okay well it needs some time to initialize so we'll just put a delay node before it and then we'll have it run and that should fix it right so if we run again we can see that okay yeah it, it's delaying and then you can see that okay run successful it, it had time to do whatever the component in this case needed to do so problem solved right no, problem not solved. What happens if you end up in a situation where this component needs to operate on larger amounts of data or it needs to do something that takes more time? This is a fixed value for the most part. You, you can have it variable, but uh, you will not be able to flexibly determine how long this operation will take. So if we were to have two seconds now and call on our heavy simulation 
uh, actor component instead, you can see that two seconds was not enough. So this could be something like uh, maybe we had the, uh, when we have a small level, it takes a certain amount of time to load whatever it needs, and then we have a really large level, and it takes a lot of time to read, and, and then the delay will not be enough, and essentially we have a broken, uh, it, nothing is working what, like we're intending, right? So the approach to fixing something like this is to avoid the delay again. If we go to the right here, you can see here that I have a, a similar example where I have a character set up and then we want to run the main functionality here, right? And we want to run it for the heavy simulate grid here. But in this case, what we want to do instead is we want to bind an event. We want to make this event driven. So what we say is we want to have an event we want to bind to in this component and say, whenever that is done, we want to run this code over here in this event. So what does this mean? Well, in our simulation component here, it just has a timer to simulate whatever time is going to be taking for it to do whatever it needs to do. And once it's done with that, it says it's ready to run and it calls an event dispatcher. This is the event dispatcher that we're actually binding to here. So we're saying here that on our begin play, we want to call our component and say, hey, when you're done with your stuff, please let us know, and then we'll actually run the code on you that we want to run. Uh, this example is, is a little bit simplistic, and, and, and reality will probably be more complex, but hopefully you understand the, um, the idea behind this. Because now if we run here, it doesn't really matter how long time this actor takes to component takes to run, it will let us know when it's done and then we execute code on it, right? So this avoids the delay and also lets us run the code when it is ready. Okay, so now we have seen three different examples of what not to do and what you could do instead. What are the cases when you could actually make use of the delay nodes that are reasonable? Well, in my opinion, something like the delay node is something that's useful for something like yeah. Let's say you have a screen that you want to appear, it maybe shows some animation or something like that, and you want it to be not skippable, you want it to take its course, and let's say that is two seconds. You have something very specific that's going to happen, it's always going to be taking that amount of time, you can run a delay node for something like that, that makes sense. The delay zero is something that runs operations and, and causes you to delay one frame, and this can be useful because some uh, things in the engine, depending on what you're making use of, have data that is only available first, the next frame has been ticked, the calculations and stuff like that, possibly because of tick groups and such things. So the delay node for zero is something that's, in my opinion, probably more common and useful uh, than this should probably be, be, which is probably for very hard-coded, specific and rare situations. Anyway, that's going to be all about delay nodes for today. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos, or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.